My customers could not understand why my formula delivered what I promised. After all, in Israel and also in America, you can find tinctures of habanero. My customers wanted to know the differences between my tincture of habanero to others. And I'm sure you want to know the differences too, right? So let me share with you top secret information directly from the herbal medicine industry. Because when it comes to herbal medicine in general and to herbal tinctures in particular, there are three basic fundamentals you should know. Let's start. Number one, the quality of herbs. It is important to know where your herbs were grown and in under what conditions. You also want to know if the herbs are fresh and didn't stay years in storage because places like China, India and countries in South America don't have agricultural regulations like here in the US. Using herbs grown in those countries cannot guarantee the herbs were not sprayed with carcinogen, herbicides, and pesticides. That's why low-quality herbs are cheaper than premium herbs. In all the years I practiced herbal medicine, I made my tinctures and other herbal preparations with only premium quality herbs. After all, we are talking about my medicine too, right? Number two, the way tinctures are made. You see, in general, tinctures are made with water and alcohol. Alcohol serves as a preservative and to dissolve oil, gums, and raisins from plants. And water extracted other components like flavonoids and pigments. Capsaicin, for that matter, is an oily compound found especially in the seeds and the membrane where the seeds are attached to the fruit. And as such, the menstruum should have more alcohol than water. The leading master herbalist of the past century recommended using 80% alcohol and 20% water to make an official tincture of cayenne. Looking at different labels, we can see how habanero tinctures are made with less alcohol and with added glycerin to it. But glycerin is a sweet preservative, most likely made from animal fat. So why to add it to habanero tincture? Eating or drinking anything with fat in it reduces the heat felt in the mouth. That's why in hot pepper eating competitions, you can see cups of milk next to the competitors. Therefore, incorrect preparation and dilution of tinctures brings me to the third fundamental you need to know about herbal medicine. The suggestion dosage. Most herbal tinctures have low medicinal value, not just because of the first two fundamentals I talked before, but also because of the suggested dosage. Here is one habanero tincture suggesting to take 30 drops one to three times a day, and another one calls for three to five drops as needed. I can assure you that none of the dosage is correct for medicinal therapeutic action. One tincture is too weak and you're probably going to need a hundred drops to have any therapeutic action in time of a heart attack or stroke in progress. The other suggests three to five drops in time of need. Even if the tincture is strong, it's too little for a quick effect on the heart in time of need. And if speaking about the two major killers, heart attack and stroke, you probably heard they are on the rise among young adults. Perhaps due to COVID-19 gene therapy shot and other reasons. Therefore, it might be a wise idea to have a potent habanero tincture on hand. Below this video, 
you have a chance to get a hold on my handmade preparatory master blend habanero tincture I named Drops of Fire. Do it now. Goodbye.